So one of the most asked for features in Ciro is a curves tool. Same way that we do things when we take it out of Ciro into Photoshop or GIMP. PixInsight also has a curves transformation tool. It's a way for you to control the contrast and the brightness in your image. It's here in the new version of Ciro 1.4. So let's check it out. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. Okay, so the curves transformation tool is best used on an image that's already been stretched to some extent to give you the control over the brightness and the contrast that it's intended to be used for. So the image I have open right now is obviously a starless image that I have started doing some stretching using the generalized hyperbolic stretch with. And to access the curves tool, we're going to come up in the image processing under stretches and then curves transformation. And we'll just quickly go over some of the functions that are within the tools here. So similar to generalized hyperbolic stretch or the histogram transformation, this is our histogram. Up on the top is our zoom level. So if I increase the one and keep hitting the plus button, we're zooming into our histogram. You can make this box wider by grabbing the edge and stretching it over if you need to. Hitting the button labeled one will reset your zoom back to one. We also have a logarithmic scale. So you can use this view that we're looking at right now. Or if you enable this option, it gives you a little bit better representation on actually where the data is at. This is obviously a color image. So we have our red, green, and blue channels. So you can make adjustments to all three channels, just one channel, just two channels, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. All three channels are on right now. So if I was to click on the red button, now just the green and blue are on. If I was to click on green, just the blue's on. You get the idea with that. The next button here is for the grid that we see in the histogram view. You can turn that off and on if you like. There are two types of algorithms that we can use, cubic spline or linear. And the easiest way to explain that is if I just lay some points down, we'll just put three of them here. And in cubic spline, if I hold my left mouse button down and drag this up, you can see the, the curve between the points. Nice, smooth, gradual curve. That's our cubic spline. If I was to change this to linear, then that curving goes away and it's a straight line from one point to the other and it does have a different effect on the image so if you look in the background here over at the flaming star we're in linear without making any adjustments up here if i switch to cubic spline you can see it darken the image and that's because of the different algorithm that it's using now again it's a spline versus being completely linear curve point id so your curve points start down here in the bottom left corner this is in your shadows this would be labeled as zero this is number one, this is number two, this is number three, and then the last one up top here in your whites would be number four. And you can flip back through them using the arrows on either side. So if we start at zero, which is this one down here, you can see our X and Y coordinates for that point are zero, zero. If I click on the arrow to the right, it takes me to this endpoint, also shows me the X, Y, and so on and so forth. I can click through all of the endpoints currently laid down. And then obviously, if you're doing this with a sequence, you can apply it to the entire sequence. And we have our live preview button that we can turn on and off to show us the before and after. So I'm gonna reset that. And before we start playing around with the curves, I wanna point out that if you're planning on using the curves transformation, you, depending on how you do your initial stretching, you may need to change your workflow just a little bit. If you notice right here to the left of the histogram, there's a big space. Generally, and let me close out of this, and I'm gonna come back up into image processing and go to my generalized hyperbolic stretch. So I had to make a change in my workflow because part of my workflow is, is as I'm stretching, if my data gets too far over from the left at some point in time, sometimes even multiple times, I'll come over to my type of stretch and change it to the linear stretch and then move this black point over because there's no data here, right? So I would slide this over as close to the left edge as I can, watching my clipping percentage so I'm not clipping any data and then click apply. What happens when you do that, and I'll apply that and close it, and we'll come back up into curves again, is as I'm starting to lay my points down, I'm so close to the edge of the histogram with the data that I can actually start clipping data as I'm making my adjustments. So the idea is don't bring your data all the way over to the left side. You want to leave yourself some room to be able to play in your curves adjustment. So again, I'm going to close this, and I'm going to undo that black point that I just set and we'll go back in the stretches and back in the curves 
So we have room to play with here with the histogram. So I'll give you guys uh, a few examples here on how to use the tool. The first is, you've probably heard it numerous times, it is an S-curve. It, it can be done in Photoshop, it can be done in GIMP, and now it can be done in Cyril. And it's a way to increase the contrast in your image. So I am going to stretch my dialog box out here so we can see the first and the second point. The goal here is to increase the slope of the curve in the center of your data, which is represented right here with the histogram. So if I was to create a point somewhere around here, this is one of those things you just play with. Try different points, try different adjustments. There's no set way of doing it. This is just an example of what an S-curve would look like. And then I can come over here and put a second point. As I pull this up and maybe pull this one down and over a little bit, you can see how the curve is affecting the image. We can untick our preview button. And hit it again so that's your s curve you know there's nothing wrong with taking this point and putting it over here so if i wanted to move this point i can just hold my left mouse button down and drag that point over and you can see the different effect that it has on the image if you need to remove a point that you laid down simply just right click on that point and it'll go away you can have multiple points depending how you're using the tool the other way if you just wanted to clear all of them at once is just come down and hit your reset button it'll put everything right back to the starting point so that's the s curve the other one is you can make black point and white point adjustments so again this point here curve point zero and curve point one up top if i was to left mouse button click on this point i could drag over closer to the data, darkening the image. And then just the opposite, if I grab the white reference point up top and drag it over, the image will start to get brighter as I do that. So using it in this manner allows you to adjust the, the shadows and the highlights of the image independently. And then you can actually combine the two, right? So again, we wanna watch we don't clip data being this close, but after moving my black point and my white point, I could come in here and I could start and do an S curve right just you can spend a lot of time in here but it really allows you to dial things in as far as your contrast and brightness are concerned so we're going to hit reset again go back to the beginning and then we can also do targeted adjustments so i'm going to zoom up just a little bit on this histogram and targeted adjustments for example would be a way that you could darken the shadows without affecting other parts of your image so similar to a, an s curve but the s curve is not what we're going for we can lay uh, multiple points down like i mentioned before maybe start one right here and then if i want to put one here and pull that up and then put a third one here now i can make adjustments in between these two and you can see how it's affecting the curve now obviously that's way too blown out but i'm just trying to give you an idea you can see how it's affecting let's go back to a zoomed out view so we can actually see the changes that we're going to be making with this so so multi-point adjustments will allow you to kind of get into the places that you want to be in the image uh, to make specific adjustments without affecting the entire image just certain areas of it it's a tool that you're going to be playing with a lot to get used to it and understand how your curve points affect where you place them within the histogram but with some practice and repetition you'll get it down pat so again let's reset our view and i want to show you how you can use region of interest so you can kind of do a side-by-side -side comparison when you're doing your stretching so it won't affect the whole image it'll just affect the selection that you've created so for example if i wanted to work over here on the flaming star let's move this over so we get everything in view i could draw a selection here right click region of interest and set my region of interest and this message is just telling you that the tool does support region of interest so click ok and i have a video on this as well so I'll leave that in the description as well as a link up top here that goes over how to use the region of interest. So now everything that's within this green box with our preview on, if I was to just start to make adjustments, the adjustments are only going to affect what's within this selection, within this region of interest. So I've been using this. I feel like I just want to bump up the levels a little bit, but I want to be able to see a before and after without needing to disable my preview and enable my preview. It allows me to see both at the same time just by making my adjustments. And then if you like what you see in the preview, you just come over and hit apply and it applies it to the whole image. So let's reset my view here. And then obviously I'm sure everybody's aware, but just to show you, this isn't just for your RGB images. If I was to open up a mono image and we'll just go into auto stretch for now, that's against what I just said before. You should stretch it a little bit before you actually use the curves, but I just want to show you what the interface looks like. So with the mono image open, we go back up in the image processing stretches again and then curves transformation. 
as you would expect there's no color channels you just have the one monochrome channel that you can make adjustments to as well everything else works the same so it's always nice when the developers listen to you and they give you the tools that you're asking for and this is one of those cases so the curves tool is really going to help you improve your image processing spend a lot of time with it so you get good with it it's not just a matter of throwing down a couple points and making a small adjustment and being done go through it pull up some of your old data and play with that if that's what you need to do you're really going to like this new tool before we go i just want to thank all my members here on youtube and on buy me a coffee appreciate all your support if you're not a subscriber consider subscribing hit that notification bell so you never miss a video share the video give it a like leave a comment if you have any questions i'll do my best to help you so that wraps this one up i appreciate everybody's time we'll see you in the next one and clear skies